It's been pointed out before that some Pokemon have very strange attributes. Height discrepancies, weight oddities, and for some reason we need to sort them by body shape. Whatever the hell purpose that serves. But one thing I discovered while writing the scripts for my first episode of this Pokemon month is that some of them have incredibly strange species. This was a list that I never actually planned to do, but after I looked through enough of them I figured I could crack some shitty jokes about them. I mean most of you probably didn't even know that species were a thing. But oh they are, and some of them are great shit. So here we are, these are my top 10 weirdest Pokemon species. The parameters are pretty simple. If a Pokemon species seems weird, then it's on here. Whether it's a weird word, description, or just doesn't actually make sense or exist, then it will probably be somewhere on this list. If you know of any that you think I missed, then make sure to mention them, because there are a hell of a lot out there. I hope you enjoy my list, and here's an extra video of Pokemon Month for you. Let's go! What's going on, man? So first off, I understand that Oddish's species is meant to be the actual weed, but what fucking localization team let this slide by? I'm dead serious. Look at the top of Oddish's head, and then look at the top of a weed leaf. Whoever made this species for Oddish had to be either really tone deaf, or knew exactly what the hell they were doing. Now all that I'm waiting on is the edgy juggalo phase to come out of Oddish. The thing that really confuses me is that Oddish is the weed Pokemon, Gloom is the weed Pokemon, and Vileplume is the flower Pokemon. Now Vileplume is based off of the Reflessia Arnaldi, an actual fucking weed. Gloom is the infant stage of this weed, but it's considered a weed and not a flower. I don't know man, I'm still just waiting to see the episode of the anime where Oddish goes to an insane clown posse concert. So there's a certain place in my heart for cat Pokemon. Most of them are pretty awful, but I'm a cat person, so I like them. But the one thing that I can't excuse in them are their species. So some of these fucking things don't make any sense. There's no one specific Pokemon that fills up this spot. There's like eight of them. So I guess we can start with the first cats, Meowth and Persian. It already starts off weird here, Meowth is the scratch cat and Persian is the classy cat. Somebody wanna tell me why the hell this is called a scratch cat? Cats naturally scratch, they need it to fucking survive. So naming this scratch cat seems a bit redundant. But then I don't know, why don't we move on to Stitty and Delcaddy? Stitty is the kin Pokemon, as would be expected, but Delcaddy is the fucking prim Pokemon. Where in the goddamn hell did you get that? Normally you move from kitten to cat, but no, in this case you move from kitten to prim. But that's not even the worst part. There are Pokemon that are cats that just take no part in this dumbass naming convention. Like Esper, it's the restraint Pokemon, but Zangoose is considered the cat ferret Pokemon. Someone wanna tell me what in the titty a cat ferret is? But let's proceed. How about Glammeow and Purugly? Glammeow is just the catty Pokemon. Okay, excuse me, it isn't a cat. It's just fucking catty. But Purugly is the tiger cat. Oh, but hold on. So you're telling me that the seventh gen starter Lit and its evolution Toracat are the fire Pokemon, but then Incineroar becomes the heal Pokemon. This Tony the Tiger looking ass couldn't even retain any form of cat in its name. Because god forbid we give it the name of Tiger Cat, but instead we give it to this morbidly obese quadruped. Okay, I gotta calm myself. Let's just keep going with the list. Alright, so some Pokemon species can be weird, but some can just be brutal. I mean, how great can you feel about yourself whenever you are literally designated as a tumor on the world? Such is the case with Wishy Washy. Wishy Washy species is called Small Fry. Now coming from a completely average sized white guy, the nomenclature of Small Fry isn't always the best thing to have. In addition to the fact that Wishy Washy now has the lowest base stat total in the game, 5 below Sunkern, throwing him the name of Small Fry seems like a real slap in the face. I guess the one thing that is pretty redeeming about it is that even while he's still a Small Fry, once he hits a certain level, then he gets some of the most ridiculous stats in this region. Kinda of reminds you not to mess with the little guy, huh? Some of the funniest and strangest Pokemon are without a doubt the ones that are overly specific as to what the Pokemon is. I mean, there was Weed with Oddish, the various Pokemon that are literally just named Cat, 
And then there's Ant Pit. See, Trappage is based off of the antlion larva that makes little pits in the ground where prey fall in and can be attacked. But Trappage is neither an ant nor a pit. Like, I get if this thing were just a fucking sarlacc pit, then sure, it would be an ant pit. But it's just a bulbous bug. I see no pit underneath you, you damn liar. In the same realm as Oddish, very accurate naming of a Pokemon species can be sometimes problematic. Although, when you actually think about it, calling a Tropius by the species a fruit isn't even that accurate. So despite this semi being a homosexual slur, how in the damn hell is Tropius a fruit? This shit right here is a palm tree, and other Pokemon that could be possibly named fruit are named something different, like Cherubi. This is an actual damn fruit, so why don't they call it fruit? Oh, because it's called Cherry. So if this guy is so specifically called Cherry, then why don't we call Tropius Banana? I mean, he's not like a banana goatee hanging down right here, so why the hell not? Or, you know, you could call it by what it actually is, the Banana Tree Pokemon. Generalizing this thing as a fruit is equal parts awkward and just plain wrong. In Pokemon Sun and Moon, we're seeing a large development on the team fighting realm of things. With all of the additions of Pokemon abilities, there are so many different combinations for doubles and triples that can prove to be monstrously successful. So it only makes sense that in Sun and Moon, they would introduce a species of teamwork to only one Pokemon. The Simeon is for some reason called the Teamwork Pokemon, despite him being the only Pokemon having that species. How are you gonna work together whenever you're the only one on the team? It would have made so much more sense to give the species to Pesimian and Oranguru, or for example, Plusle and Minin. Just not one Pokemon at a single time. I mean, granted, a lot of Pesimian's design choices are kind of weird. Why is there a coconut on your head? There are some interesting species for legendary Pokemon in some games. For example, Arceus has the species of Alpha Pokemon. Groudon is the Continental Pokemon. Mew has the species of New Species Pokemon. But surprisingly enough, none of these Pokemon are actually in the legendary species. That only falls to Arcanine. So somehow, by some strange consideration, Arcanine is the legendary Pokemon, despite not being anywhere near legendary. Like, they couldn't have gone with a better name. I mean, for God's sakes, you got like 20 fucking cat variations. You can't just name it Dog or some shit. Although from here on out, the species on this list stop being strangely specific and out of place, and instead are just way the fuck out there. So hey, maybe legendary isn't that bad of a name after all. Unlike some of the species on this list, some of these have very badass names. Although, they come with the strangest tinge of creativity that really just makes you question where the hell they got the name from. Caracosta somehow came into the species of Proto-Turtle, which I can only imagine should be pronounced as Proto-Turtle. I get that Proto is the Latin word for first, so Caracosta is the first turtle. But they did the exact opposite with Archaeops, which is just the first bird. So which is it, huh? Proto bird or first turtle? Actually, now that I say it, Proto bird sounds fucking awesome. But hey, I guess you can't get what you want all of the time. So a lot of these Pokemon on here are just one-offs. They're weird-ass Pokemon species that really only apply to one Pokemon out of the bunch. But there comes a time when the planets align and you get an entire evolutionary line of weird-ass Pokemon species. So in the Garchomp line, we start off with Gibble. Right away, you can tell that this is going to be fun because we get to see that Gibble is the Land Shark Pokemon. I mean, shit, yeah, that's accurate, but still, Lamb Shark, just saying that makes me laugh. But then we move on to Gabite, whose species is Cave. What the fuck? Now let me ask you, does this look anything like this? No, the only answer is no. How in the name of God do you get the idea of Cave for Gabite? How much Oddish was the localization team smoking whenever they came up with this one? And then Garchomp's species is Mock. 
I mean, this is dumb on its own. But after Gabite, I don't think I can be surprised anymore. I mean, how the fuck are these two anything near similar? Mach is because Garchomp can move fast or something. I don't really know. But there's only one more past this. So here's some honorable mentions that I had to throw on here. Because they're just too dumb to leave out. Togetomaru's species of roly-poly. Stuffle's species of flailing. Togetic and Blissey's species of happiness. Makuhita's species of guts. And Altaria's species of humming. The way in which I've been ranking these has been extremely subjective. Basically, it's been a process of first looking at the name, and then either laughing or not. And based on the amount of laughs slash amount of stupid jokes that I could make on its behalf, determined if it made the list or not. But there is one that I just can't find a joke to make about, because it really just speaks for itself. Ladies and gentlemen, I present Mega Fire Pig. <laughs> The name is really self-explanatory, but to go through the breakdown, we've got Mega, meaning big, Fire, meaning, well, fire, and Pig, the type given to Embor and its pre-evolutions. See, similar to some of the other Pokemon on here, Embor's pre-evolutions share parts of its name, and then Embor gets a little addition. Tepig and Pig Knight are just a standard Fire Pig. All right, I can accept that. But then whenever you tag the, on the word Mega, it just becomes a little too much. I mean, the funny thing is that he existed even before the idea of Mega Evolutions were probably a thing. So he's technically the first Mega Pokemon. But being able to be known as Mega Fucking Fire Pig is really a gift. I only wish that taxonomy worked in my favor so that instead of Homo Sapiens, I could be Homo Fire Pig. Now that's just an accurate description right there. I'm Mr. Alfredo Sauce, and if you happen to learn anything today, I would just hope that it's a fact that the wonderful world of Pokemon is only so expansive until you make 20 different types of cat Pokemon. Thank you, and good night. Hey, how's it going, guys? This is the third video of Pokemon Month, and if uh, I sound a little bit extra retarded this time, it's probably because I'm sick and I can't breathe out of my nose. So, uh, despite that, I hope you still like the video. On the left right now, I have, uh, top 10 Alola forms, which I put out last week. Pretty decent, except they got leaked, so, like, why the fuck did I make that video anyways? And on the right, I have the playlist, as always, for all of my Pokemon Month videos from the past. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll see you next week with top 10 most overrated Pokemon. Bye!